Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new edition of the Daily Debate. In tonight's show we're going to be taking a closer look on the second leg of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's visit to Gulf countries that started off with Oman yesterday and continuing today to Bahrain where he met with uh, King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, the King of Bahrain at the capital Manama. We're going to be focusing on his tour for these uh, two days and we're going to be looking at the prospects of negotiations, talking about the prospects of strengthening the bilateral uh, ties, be it political or economic. But before we start doing that, let's check out some of the stories making the news today. And we'll start off with President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who arrived in the Bahraini capital, Manama, on Tuesday on the second and last leg of the Gulf tour that began in Muscat. Now, starting a two-day visit to Bahrain, President al-Sisi was welcomed at the Manama airport, then at Il Sakhir Royal Palace by King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, the King of Bahrain. President Sisi holds summit talks with King Hamad on bilateral relations, Arab and regional issues of mutual concern, as well as the unfolding regional and international crises. Before that, President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi left the Armeni capital on Tuesday. And earlier, Sisi met Sultan Hassan bin Tariq al-Sayed of Oman in Al Alam Al Amir Palace in the capital Muscat. Presidential spokesperson Bassam Radi said the President Sisi and Sultan Hassan held private talks during which Sisi praised the level of coordination between the two sides and unified vision over issues of mutual concern. Rodi said that Sisi also expressed appreciation for sharing viewpoints over efforts to keep maritime security in the Arabian Gulf and the Red Sea and fighting terrorist organizations. During his visit to Oman, President Sisi met representatives of the country's business institutions, company heads and concerned government bodies. Rodi said the meeting started with a showing of a documentary detailing achievements in Egypt in recent years followed by a review by the Minister of Planning, Hela Said, of investment opportunities and mechanisms in Egypt in all fields. He said that during the encounter, Assisi expressed keenness on developing economic and trade ties with the business community in Oman to serve the interests of both sides. He also praised positive developments to economic and trade ties between Cairo and Muscat. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi uh, held a phone call this evening with His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan, during which President al-Sisi expressed Egypt's, uh, e the Egyptian government and people's deepest condolences for the victims of the tragic accident that occurred at Al-Aqaba seaport. Al-Sisi conveyed his condolences for all the victims in heaven and inspire their families' patience and solace and wishes the injured speedy recovery. For his part, King Abdullah II of Jordan expressed his thanks and appreciation for President Sisi's sincere feelings, stressing the strong and historical relations between Egypt and Jordan. These were some of the stories making the news today, but now uh, going back and turning our attention to uh, the visit of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to Bahrain, the second and last leg of his uh, Gulf tour visit that started yesterday in Oman. Let's check out this report regarding the Egyptian-Bahraini deep historical relations, and we'll be right back.
The royal court welcomed President Sisi and his accompanying delegation in a visit which comes within the framework of strengthening the solid relations and supporting the existing areas of cooperation between Egypt and Bahrain. The visit is based on the keenness of the leaderships of the two brotherly countries that would develop historical ties towards broader horizons for the benefit of the peoples. The Bahraini ambassador in Cairo and permanent delegate to the Arab League, Hisham bin Mohammed Jalder, said President Sisi's visit to Bahrain is a clear reflection of the special historical relations and firm, cordial, brotherly bonds between the Egyptian and Bahraini leaderships and peoples. He said the trip falls within the context of regular official visits and exchange contacts at the highest levels between the two countries under the guidance of President Sisi and King Hamad, commending the congruity of views shared by both sides towards regional and international issues of mutual concern. He asserted the keenness of the Bahraini Kingdom on fostering its partnerships and cooperation with Egypt in all domains. He also reiterated Bahrain's constant support to Egypt and backing of efforts aimed at safeguarding its security and stability. He expressed strong appreciation in Egypt's honorable stands and support of the safety, security and stability of the Arabian Gulf. The visit to the Sultanate of Amman and the Kingdom of Bahrain comes within the framework of the specificity of the Egyptian Gulf relations and cooperation between the nations. During the tour, the president and Gulf leaders also held consultations and coordination on various regional and international issues which require concerted efforts to protect Arab national security and confront any attempts to interfere internal affairs of Arab countries. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and now we're joined over the phone by Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, the former Assistant Foreign Minister, to shed more light on this visit. Ambassador Bayoumi, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, Your Excellency, now looking at the two uh, stops for President Sisi's Gulf tour that first took him to Amman and now Bahrain, uh, before we start talking about Bahrain, just how would you assess this uh, two-stop tour? Uh, the Gulf tour of President Sisi to Oman and Bahrain meeting the Sultan Haysam and also King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa so far? I think this is a great process uh, within the consultation between the main Arab countries to face the uh, problems on the international level, on the regional level and bilateral uh, files also. Of course, uh, we are preparing for the coming uh, Gulf States meeting, which will be uh, held with the presence of the presidents of Egypt, presidents of Iraq, and the uh, Royal Highness of uh, Jordan. And of course, our uh, foreign guest is the American President Biden. And it seems that we need a sort of consultation to uh, prepare a sort of uh, a united Arab uh, uh, position towards most of the problems we are facing. On the international level, we are facing three problems. The uh, uh, economic e effects of the coronavirus. Second, the, the economic impact of uh, the war in Ukraine, whether uh, concerning the energy supplies or the food supplies. Third, the preparing for or the preparation for the environment uh, conference in uh, Sharm el Sheikh next November. On our region, we have a lot of files, open files, whether the war in Yemen, the occupation of Turkey to the north of uh, Syria and the north of Iraq, what's happening in Libya, which is not pleasant at all, the threat against the discoveries of the gas in the East Mediterranean. We have a lot to be discussed among us and then with our uh, partner, the American president. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have a sort of bilateral in, uh, questions between the United States and each member states of the meeting. Mm -hmm. 
Ambassador Bayoumi, uh, if we take a closer look at Bahrain, not a lot of people are knowledgeable of how strong and historical the relationship between Egypt and Bahrain is. How would you assess the relationship right now as uh, it, it stands on a long, strong history of uh, political, economic and cultural uh, relations binding both nations? As you well know, when the Arab League was established in 1946, uh, there were only seven independent countries, and the whole Gulf states, except that Saudi Arabia, were occupied by the British occupation. And we chaired them their struggle to gain their independence against the British colonialism, and we, we did so uh, successfully until they got all the rights in, uh, in the late in the 70s. So they became member states with us in the Arab League, member states in the free trade area, the large Arab free trade area also, and we enjoy this sort of relation. They are the largest uh, investor in Egypt. They are the, uh, our, our main trade partner at the same time. And we have a big Egyptian community in the Gulf in general, and especially in Bahrain and Oman, which is well created, and they are helping the development of these countries. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, the former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you very much, Your Excellency, for joining us. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, continuing our uh, closer look on this visit uh, by President Sisi to Menema, Bahrain, today, uh, following the visit to uh, Oman yesterday. Let's check out this report regarding the President's efforts and trips, meeting all the Arab leaders ahead of many developments that will be taking place on the political arena in the very foreseeable future. Let's check out this report and we'll be right back. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi has been meeting with several Arab leaders in the lead-up to U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to the Middle East, slated for mid-July. President al-Sisi held meetings with Bahrain's King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and Oman's Sultan Haytham bin Tariq al-Said. Also, Jordan's King Abdullah II and the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Sultan Haytham expressed his appreciation for Egypt's efforts in supporting Oman on all levels in addition to the Egyptian expat community's contributions to the development of the Gulf country. Mantara added that Oman is keen to boost bilateral ties in all fields in the upcoming period by boosting and increasing Omani investments in Egypt. For his part, President Sisi expressed his appreciation for the strong strategic relations between the two countries, adding that Egypt is keen to boost and diversify all aspects of these ties. The President also lauded the current coordination and unification of vision between Egypt and Oman concerning issues of mutual concern, whether regionally or internationally.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're joined here tonight in the studio by Dr. Mail Batran, the political and economic expert, and also the uh, former uh, lady chair of the ICT committee in the Egyptian, Egyptian parliament. Dr. Batran, thank you very much for joining us this it's evening. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Uh, Dr. Batran, now, today is the second and last uh, stop for President Sisi for his uh, two-day golf tour that took him first to Amen. Today he just arrived to uh, Bahrain. Bahrain, the capital Manama, to meet with uh, King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa. Now, a lot of people uh, are witnessing these visits by President Sisi. A, a lot of meetings, I mean, it started off with uh, the, the Crown Prince uh, of Saudi Arabia, also uh, the leader of Qatar yesterday, uh, Sultan Haysam, today King Hamad. We're seeing a string of visits. Before we start focusing on this string of visits, what, how would you highlight this meeting between President Sisi and the King of Bahrain, King Hamad? What, what we are um, seeing and witnessing in the region um, uh, and in the world is, ex is extremely critical. But Egypt has a position of, of, uh, of, within its position of leadership, it has a position of peace and of endorsing um, um, sovereign rights, endorsing political um, 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 solutions uh, using peace and um, negotiations and strategic common benefit mm -hmm. uh, on a bilateral, trilateral, and we w are going to be seeing penta maybe or hexalateral mm -hmm. in the coming uh, few weeks as well. So all of this, it's leading up to the meeting with President Biden, who is coming to the region soon, um, I believe in mid-July. And uh, this meeting is going to take place in Saudi Arabia. And so the president has already met with all leaders that are going to be um, present in the meetings uh, on an um, the American uh, meeting in the region. And uh, definitely there are several uh, uh, topics on the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, going back to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Bahrain is in a very special position in the Gulf. Egypt has had uh, very extensive relationships. President Sisi, this is not his first visit. I believe this is his fourth uh, visit in um, the last few years. Um, the, the relationship has also been endorsement, uh, political endorsement and um, um, economic um, uh, uh, exchanges, but mostly political endorsement on a Gulf level, on a um, 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 sovereign, um, I don't want to say the word really Islamic, but um, uh, stability level, because you know there is uh, a few um, um, undertones uh, within Al Bahrain mm -hmm. that the Arab nations in general and leaders of the Arab nations, namely Egypt, um, uh, want to support Bahrain in its position of, of sovereignty, of peace, of negotiation and of stability. Mm -hmm. Well, you've mentioned that President Sisi uh, met with King Hamad. Uh, quite a few times. Yes. I mean, if we try and compare it to... Uh, he was here last week. Uh, he was here earlier this month yes, uh, yes. in Sharm el-Sheikh. Yes. So we're talking about two meetings within a month. Now, this is... It's, it's, it's way too... I mean, it happens two meetings in a quick succession. And you've mentioned that there have been a few visits as well over the past few years. Now, what is the, the importance? I mean, when we talk about Egyptian... Gulf or Egyptian Arabian or Egyptian African visits, we're always talking about the, the strengthening of political and economic relations. But having two meetings within a month and a few meetings within a few years with uh, the Bahraini king, what is the significance of such uh, meetings and close ties? I will start, uh, I will not only talk about Bahrain here, I will also include Oman. Mm -hmm and um, the very special relationships this is his uh, our uh, president's second mm -hmm. visit to oman to muscat and um, what's happening on a global level 
the situation of Europe with the Ukrainian-Russian situation and the impact of that on the oil sector, particularly the food sector, the food crisis that is um, getting to be really um, uh, emphasized around the world in the modern um, uh, developed world and the less developed one in, 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 less, in countries um, way less developed than, than Europe, such as Indonesia and what we're seeing in Asia. Mm -hmm. So this is, let's say, the, the main uh, emphasis point. This has resulted into a change of political um, powers within our region, mm -hmm. because we too have had on the sanctions that are taking place towards the Russian side are creating uh, chaotic repercussions for the oil sector. So because we have had countries with sanctions within the region related to oil as well, so we need oil mm -hmm. to be moved within the region from the not very regular only sources, mm -hmm. and namely here Iran as well. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the, 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 relation, the strategic, political, economic relationships within the region needs to be reshaped within certain boundaries of political direction for our Gulf friends, um, Saudi and the Gulf friends, for our European friends, for the United States, and, and of course also for uh, our Israeli partner as well now, uh, particularly after the very, very important uh, uh, gas treaty that we have had via uh, Israel towards Europe. So the situation is a really changing situation. Mm -hmm. All of this put together, you also cannot forget, and that's why I brought in the Muscat visit, you cannot forget the Yemen situation, the Yemen situation in a, a, a peninsula that is now very fraught with um, 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 pressures to help stabilize the responsibility now on the um, Arabian Peninsula, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf countries, um, and Iran, and the relationship with the oil. Now this area is important for the world uh, supply mm -hmm. of a strategic important component namely oil mm -hmm. it's it's pricing we are getting into winter the movement OPEC the prices and then you've got of course the not so uh, lovely neighbors who don't like each other you've got Israel and you've mm -hmm. got Iran but you need to deal with Iran now because of the oil situation so they are trying to remove sanctions and Iran is not taking this uh, with a with a oh thank you very mm -hmm. much I was expecting that it's mm -hmm. taking it a step further oh I need one two three four mm -hmm. I need to do this as well yes. but the situation I believe Yemen is extremely important mm -hmm. to stabilize things in Yemen and I believe the Egyptian leadership of um, common um, uh, benefit mm -hmm. of a win-win situation a win-win not only to Egypt and the region, but a win-win to each sovereign country, giving, granting them real uh, populous rights of uh, potentials of growth, of uh, hope for their people. And Egypt has had a fantastic example of, I can build internally an mm -hmm. economy while managing strategically a very complicated uh, 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 international situation, mm -hmm. and still suck and maintain um, hope for my people. Mm -hmm. but I think the message that he gives from the Egyptian people and from our Egyptian economy and the success stories that he has, taking it to Oman, they discussed in Oman the creating of new cities and the ability of such cities impact on the uh, Omani economy mm -hmm. and how can we use also the infrastructure of Egypt into helping the building of the main infrastructure, basic infrastructure of Yemen with the support of its local mm -hmm. um, um, partners within the region and multilaterals as well and of course the United Nations. The, 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 the balance 
is extremely interesting for those who love politics and who's had thick by a political interesting uh, 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 how do I say development mm -hmm. and the fact that he started the Gulf visit with Oman Oman's like we were discussing at the beginning Oman's relationship with Egypt goes a very very long way it goes all the way believe it or not to Hatshepsut mm -hmm. she was the first uh, Egyptian leader to visit Oman that was of course 3500 years ago Oman as a, as a country because of its position on the route of trade, it has always been a country that is very open-minded, that takes in a lot of point of views, and has the stability of sticking by those point of views and sticking by all its friends and partners, even so some even though some of them might not be friends. Mm -hmm. So Egypt might be our friend if we go back to 73, Egypt is our friend and maybe a lot of our, our other Egyptian neighbors would not accept what Egypt done through Camp David, so we don't want to talk to Egypt. Mm -hmm. But Oman had had this fantastic ability with former Sultan Qaboos, uh, God rest his soul, and now with Sultan Haysam, it has had this ability to be a rock very well directed and very well uh, stable knowing that it needs to maintain special relationships to overcome a big crisis mm -hmm. and because of my own personal several visits to the Omani capital and seeing the relationship also with their neighbors in Iran and knowing how integrated this relationship is and the amount of respect they have with each other Oman can go a long way, this is my own personal opinion, mm -hmm. into really clearing waters and oiling the way and helping Iran reach in their own way what they want, but at the same time mm -hmm. to grant the region the stability and grant the world the requirements of oil and help because also again for Oman and for Saudi, this is Yemen is very important. For Oman here is really a cornerstone. Yes. And then from there you go to Bahrain, which is strategically positioned in a very also sensitive way with the Iranian neighbors, with the Saudi neighbors. For again, it is really the, the, the nuance, mm -hmm. but the very positive for me nuance, seeing the king of Bahrain here, and then meeting the, the Jordanian sovereign as well, here in Sharm el-Sheikh, all three together, and then going to Oman, and going to the king again, of Bahrain, of course, I'm, I'm talking, and in the middle, having met both the Saudi uh, uh, crown prince and the Qatari emir, this is a wrap-up of an extremely sensitive, delicate, but from what we see, seemingly positive developments that are happening towards the eventual yes. a balance that maybe nobody was really expecting. Yes. Well, we're going to talk about the, the political balance of power that uh, the region hopes to reach. But you've mentioned the international crises, uh, mainly uh, the, the oil and food crisis. That was mainly ignited by the Russian and Ukrainian conflict. Now, would you look at the Egyptian meetings with the leaders of the GCC, uh, Qatar, Oman, Saudi Arabia, and now Bahrain? Are we trying to broker some sort of a deal to find uh, a good mechanism in ex uh, exchanging, uh, supplying, and demanding of oil, now natural gas, now that Egypt uh, is uh, becoming a player, a major player in this region, trying to protect the interests of this region and, in a way, guard it from any sort of negative repercussions that could be resulting or is resulting from the Russian-Ukrainian issue? It's, it's normal that all countries now are trying to preserve mm -hmm. their, their uh, food and shelter for their people. Mm -hmm. But Egypt has, has had a very interesting um, um, success story. And Egypt has a very strong position, alhamdulillah, strategically, mm -hmm. on a strategic level. 
so is Egypt trying to uh, uh, further on that and build on that? Definitely. But build on it from a strategic uh, relation point of view. Uh, there is also definitely a lot of uh, economic impact for the relationship, mm -hmm. not directly on gas and and uh, and oil only, or or gas and food prices. We've got with Oman uh, a very interesting program for um, um, steel uh, um, um, export. Yes, they, we take from them certain steel that mm -hmm. is now being part of the largest steel um, factory in mm. Egypt yes. that will specialize in military, mostly military and non-military goods as well. But this is a strategic component. We both are countries that support peace, but we are a country that have our force and we are using it strategically to maintain the peace. Mm -hmm. it, it is economic and then I really would like our Egyptian and, and, and partners to re be really proud of the point where we are discussing things today. Mm -hmm. It's not, we're not discussing from a point of weakness. There is um, an intrinsic change in the politics of the world. Yes. And that is uh, having its impact on an economical situation and an economical reality that is alien to so many of us. It is alien to our European friends all over Europe, mm -hmm. whether we're talking about our Italian friends, German friends, or Asian friends. And it is alien f for us to see them in such a situation and for us not to be in that situation in a way. Yes. So where we are today is a very, very interesting point. It's a blessing from God. We have passed a very long way. We have built an internal, I'm talking here about Egypt, an internal um, integrated uh, um, agricultural, um, uh, industrial, agri-industry particularly, mm -hmm. um, essential structure. And I'm not saying infrastructure, I'm using the word essential. Mm -hmm. Our president used the word and I really thought it had a real impact. I'm not talking about roads, I'm talking about roads with the special requirements required uh, with the rails that are required to transfer foodstuffs or mm -hmm. wheat via special uh, yes. vehicles. Mm -hmm. So it's all really essential for the general picture that we're resulting. We have agricultural land, well connected, mm -hmm. uh, well stocked with water and electricity, um, well transported, uh, the product of which is transported from silos to markets, local and international. So it's an integrated system. If I'm talking about uh, electricity, I've got my own needs and I've got all the axes of electricity that I export yes. via our uh, Asian, Jordanian, mm -hmm. Iraqi uh, axis, uh, via also Syria, uh, Jordanian, Saudi axis. Mm -hmm. We've got the Libyan also electricity axis and the most interesting strategically now, the European electricity access. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about strategic relationship with Europe in electricity, getting into winter again. You're talking about strategic uh, relationships with our northern friends, again Europe, in gas. By Ala Fikra, it started by being an Egyptian initiative. Mm -hmm. yani it was an Egyptian initiative for east of the Mediterranean to create this um, um, gas um, uh, group Mm -hmm. to help alleviate Europe's situation and uh, increase our strategic relationship of peace and strength. Yes, definitely. And that's an interesting uh, development in the yes. region happening. Well, if we, if we take a look at it in a, in a political, uh, from a political perspective now, what sort of political influence does uh, Bahrain have on the situation within the region. I mean, how influential politically can Bahrain be in terms of um, the, the situation within Yemen? How, can, how influential can it be 
uh, with the, regarding the situation with Iran. Does it have this sort of the, the strongest card, the biggest card, uh, a political influence that it can do within these crises? Or does it play um, sort of a, a lubricant between the, the relations between the different GCC countries trying to unite them or trying to satisfy certain uh, interests of these countries in a way for them to unify or have a unified stance and block, stand as a block in terms of finding a political solution to the situation in Yemen, albeit uh, Iran? I would, uh, I would give the main component of the relationship in, in, in of uh, bringing things together to mm -hmm. Muscat. Uh, and um, the Bahrain situation is a, it's a cornerstone, but uh, it's a very important cornerstone within the, the, the group. But the, the main force of impact, mm -hmm. according to my point of view, is uh, definitely towards the Muscat side because Muscat has had very long standing relationships with everybody involved mm -hmm. and in a positive way. It has never been. It has never dealt anybody a bad hand. Mm -hmm. So they believe Muscat. So for Egypt, it's the longest standing country within the Arab region with which we've had relationships. And the presence of, of the relationships between both our countries together through the uh, 56 um, war. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, the, the, all the, um, uh, Musca, the Omani people, they gave one quarter of their, um, of their salaries to help the Egyptian army back in 56. Yes. And then 73, they were there with us again. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in, in the 30th of uh, uh, June revolution, they were among us the first country, if not the first country, that supports that this is the will of the people and this is um, 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 a successful um, um, start for the Egyptian taking their, their lives into their own hands. And they never mentioned any negative intonation of what was happening. So Oman and Egypt has had this. Oman and Bahrain has had this. Mm -hmm. Oman and Iran has had this. And Oman and the rest of the GCZ, as one of the GCZ, has had the same form of ongoing structured relationship where I stand by you in your time of need. And I am there as part of the unit. And I never uh, shy from responsibility, even though it might sometimes be difficult mm -hmm. because I'm getting in between friends. Yes. So I believe that the real cornerstone, particularly, and I keep emphasizing it, particularly with the Iranian presence within the mix and the Yemeni presence, mm -hmm. Yemen, again, it's, uh, it's Iran. So the, this component of, of this new... Um, card or this new uh, role player mm -hmm. whom the region and the world needs now because of the oil, uh, uh, the presence of Oman and the fact that it started off there, this, this uh, few day trip for, for, for our leader, definitely says a lot because yes. they are friends. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter, they have been friends again throughout. Mm -hmm. So we can get along if I'm your friend, I can say a lot of things that, oh, for the first time, were a little bit, even, yes. of course, politics wins, and of course, mm -hmm. uh, a win-win situation always, uh, there, there is a good negotiator on the table, but still, an old, outstanding relationship is important. Bahrain is, 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 is a cornerstone because of its, it is friends, but uh, you know how things are with Iran. Fact. Yes. It, things need to be really oiled around. Yes. Well, Egypt seems to be playing this um, really uh, strong leading mediation role between all these countries. And the main things that we're talking about is the situation in Yemen, situation with Iran, uh, the energy and uh, food crisis. And Egypt is trying to really help and oil, oil the whole situation up and getting all these, uh, th this group and this family uh, really back together, having, uh, seeing all, uh, having, sharing the same points of view and same stances. How does Egypt benefit from this role? Are we talking about using this uh, or benefiting from this in, in an economic sense? 
Will we uh, share and benefit from a political influence of these countries for our personal political uh, concerns that Egypt is uh, worried about? How does Egypt maximize on its role being the mediator? I mean, it is a domino effect, everything is, uh, is related, but what is the main issue or what are the main benefits, politically mainly, uh, that Egypt would gain from all this uh, intricate diplomacy, as you mentioned? And what's happening, there is no personal. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, regional and global. So this is number, this is very important. Mm -hmm. It's a regional thing, a global thing. Uh, Egypt is part of a Middle Eastern family, of mm -hmm. an African family and the world family. Yes. And um, Egypt has, um, 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 it's all the force in the group. Mm -hmm. We are trying to uh, promote a future of stability, mm -hmm. of peace and of uh, strategic alliances that would uphold the peace and stability that we all require yes. uh, to, to live through. Yes. But this is extremely important. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as Dr. Uh, Batran has mentioned, this uh, tour is really, uh, not just this tour, but all the meetings that uh, the Egyptian presidency have been undertaken over the past few weeks really highlight the uh, the really clever and intricate diplomacy, a testament for Egypt's diplomacy that has been taking place, a great leap that Egypt uh, has uh, taken over the past few years. And we're going to be following up all the latest and future developments with all the main summits that are taking place with all the concerned countries. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this edition of the Daily Debate. But before we go, I'd like to thank my very distinguished guest, Dr. Mel Batran, the political and economic expert and also former lady chair of the ICT committee of the Egyptian parliament. Dr. Batran, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay tuned for more coming up on Nile International. I'm Henny Saif. Thank you for joining us.